Imagine a place where wishes come true. Where your heart's desire can become a reality. What if I told you that place is within reach? All you have to do is give your wish to me. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Animation Fascination. This episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Disney's Wish. Uh, so with me again, as always, is Mr. Sanford Clark. Hey. And then joining us again for the second, third, or fourth time for some of them is Mike and Ted. They're here. They're there. Uh, everywhere. Because their name's not Roy Cannon. Uh, <laughs> so if you guys haven't listened to the show before, Animation Fascination is a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Animation Fascination is a podcast that focuses on the world of animation. In each episode, we feature all the latest news from around the animation industry and the main topic discussing a TV series, film, or something else, whether it's traditionally hand-drawn, computer-generated, or stop-motion. If it's animated, it's up for discussion to geek out about. So as I said up, up front, we're going to be talking about the the latest Disney animated feature film celebrating 100 years for the studio this year. Uh, and we're going to kind of do like a round robin like, like we have in the past. But uh, now that we're going to be talking about it. Can we do a square sparrow instead? No. I figure <laughs> let's let's do this. I mean, we're in a and square. Now, our feature presentation. <laughs> so, with that, I will go. Those born in the '90s will know what that sound is. Yes. 80s and if not, 90s. and if not, they'll definitely recognize this. <laughs> but we'll have we'll go with Mike first, then Ted, then Stanford, then me, giving our initial thoughts. We go so, in the clear. Yeah, you go first, Mike. <laughs> I went into this movie with low expectations. Having seen the, the trailer, I was like, I was not feeling what Disney was trying to do with it. And it it exceeded my very low expectations. I enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I was happy I saw it. I mean, the worst part about it for me was the fact that we sat in the like the second to front like front row. It was brutal. But we sure. were in the reclining seats, the ones that you can like lean, put your feet up, and all that fun stuff. The dream loungers, I think they're called. How's your neck? So kind of, it kind of helps because you can lean was back. It full. It was packed, and I saw the advanced screening. Oh, okay. Uh, not the uh, um, not like a test screen or anything. It was called early access, like on Saturday. Oh yeah, like, yeah. They, I know they do like some that. Some for like family oriented um, films. Random. I was just I happened to be listening to Spotify at work. They're like, so you wished? And I was like, oh, I'm going now. <laughs> Random four o'clock showtime on a Saturday. But it was packed. Um, That's good to hear. There was maybe because I was sitting so close, there was times where the animation was clunky. Like when she was running, I was like, that is just awkwardly animated. Like, I don't know what happened there. No, I, I I did not expect it to be as good as it was for me. Um, my daughter had been listening to the songs prior, so I had heard all them. And I was like, these songs are eh for me. But then I still cried in the final scene there when they all start singing together, banding together to overthrow Magnifico. But no, it was, it was a good time. You can definitely see... I always feel like now, especially with more you hear about Disney, you can see where they focus grouped it and change things because of said focus groups. It's like a little obvious. Like same with Marvels. I watched that and I was like, wow, you can tell they really got butchered because of focus groups. Hmm. Just because the way the clunkiness of certain things. But hmm. Wish was a good time. Uh, kids, lo My daughter loved it. So kids will love it, I feel. Nice. Definitely worth you? a watch. How about you, Ted? I I went in hoping that this movie was going to be the next Disney classic. I probably <laughs> would be labeled as a Disney adult. Um, I go to the theme a, parks. I was going to say, I have a fun story related to that when I get to, to mine. Just 
continue, sir, for an error of time. <laughs> well, I like to hear fun stories every day. Um, but I'll be honest, I, I kind of was bored during it. Um, um, I really want Disney to come back. Yeah, lower and... those expectations. See, and that, that is a lot of it. Like, I went into, like, Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs with, like, no expectation and loved it. Um, and I think I think a lot of it is, like, most movies are just average. And so if you go in expecting this low and you get a marginal difference of that, it's like, I you liked it. Time. And I went in with my hopes way too high. And when it was lower than that, my the margin of negative margin. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was hoping for more. So, um, the animation was interesting because I think they, I honestly think that they were watching Spider-Man, uh, across the Spider-Verse <laughs> and they were like, Disney was like, this is the popular thing now do something like that. And they just found like a cheap filter filter on like the blender market and just applied it to the whole movie. <laughs> I, I was not as impressed with the, the final rendering. I, I just didn't think yeah, it, it looked was, as. It was very crisp, clean. Yeah. There was something up with it. It was definitely different for Disney. It wasn't the traditional acetate flip style animation. That there we're were moments. To. There are moments that I wonder if they even put in like a motion blur. Like, because I mean, traditional 2D hand drawn doesn't have motion blur. And, and so, since they were trying to mimic that, I was like, wait, is there no motion blur in this? <laughs> Where CG animation can add that in. Um, that's so, probably what I'm thinking when she was running in the woods. I was like, that's just awkward looking. Yeah. We're used to it now. I don't know. I have more thoughts, but I want to hear Stanford's thoughts. <laughs> yeah, what were your first impressions of like overall thoughts, Stan? Uh, I really appreciate what Mike and Ted are saying, and you know, and I and I agree with a lot of it. I, uh, I kind of went in with low expectations too, but maybe more <laughs> just hopeful expectations. Like, please be good, you know, please be good. Uh, uh, I, uh, I thought it was okay. Uh, I didn't just love it, but I didn't hate it either. Uh, I, I, I thought it was really slow during the first half. And then finally, things I thought, you know, picked up. At least I got more interested, uh, particularly <laughs> during the third act. I thought the third act was, was, was really quite, quite good. Uh, I didn't really like any of the songs. Um, uh, yeah, the songs were talking about that. I, I just didn't really care. And I, you know, I mean, how hard must it be to, to have to write, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. songs for musical? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't want to belittle the work or anything. I just. I just didn't really care for them, and I thought that they were kind of derivative. I thought that opening song, that Welcome to Rosa song, was just like Encanto know, all Encanto over again. Encanto copy, yeah. <laughs> just like let's copy Encanto. I work for that. Well, uh, they kind of own that. So. But you well, know, exactly, and it, and it, and the formula worked, right? But uh, I mean, think about I was watching something, all the rotoscoping they used to do in the early days, where it's literally the same scene. In every movie, if you like play them, I forgot the three they showed, and it was the same movement exactly because they just copied paste. Mm -hmm. You guys oh, yeah. know a lot the more like about the action reference. You guys know a lot more about uh, I think the creation of CG animation than I do, so I I <laughs> defer, I defer to you. However, for for me, I thought the animation was quite lovely. Uh, I, I I I like. I mean, I, I agree with you. It, it was. That was derivative, and they're like trying to copy, you know, Spider Man or even some stuff, dare I say, from DreamWorks, you know. Uh, but I'll own them soon enough, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought the color palette was nice. <laughs> I, I, I liked, I liked the you know, the 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 designs and, and backgrounds, and and overall, I thought the characters looked good. So, so the animation for me was the standout, and the story and the songs. Uh, I thought were what dragged it down for me. So yeah, my overall impressions, I'm more or less just going to kind of mirror uh, like what a, another, like another friend had said about it, where it's, it's not going to change the face of cinema or anything, but it's a nice tribute uh, to like the past 100 years of, of the studio. And, and I mean, I, I liked a lot of the music. There are, it's definitely not my favorite, like 
like you were saying, like there's some <laughs> stuff that's like catchier as far as the music in this uh, than other songs. Uh, but like there's there's definitely other like Disney movies that I enjoyed the the music for a lot more. Um, I mean, I'm always gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Star was so cute. Yeah, uh, but I mean, like like you were saying with the the animation too is that I I really liked like I don't remember what year it came out anymore, but uh, Paper Man. Remember when that came mm -hmm. out? We're like, oh, oh yeah. All right, when are we gonna get a use of this in yeah. a feature length film? And this is kind of the closest to that, where it's it's made to look like you know like a watercolor like kind of storybook to it uh with the the cg like rendering animation to it so i i liked that it wasn't you know and i, I mean i don't really have a problem with it but you know like there's there's the thing that calls it like the like the pixar eyes or like the disney eyes or like you mm -hmm. know like if you see like a like a character design people will be like oh that's that was made by by disney um so I, I enjoyed that this kind of tried to take like a different spin on that. Uh, I remember also when we first like heard like about the, like the premise of this, it like the original premise. I remember it seemed like it was going to be a, like a much different story. Because I don't know if you guys remember like when the the like the first teaser trailers came out for Lilo and Stitch, where it was like uh, like Stitch like showing up in like random scenes of and past disney, disney animated movies. films yeah yeah so when they first announced this and they're like oh like it, you remember how like the wishing star has been in a, a lot of disney movies i originally thought like what this the, like the conceit or like the concept of this movie was meant to be like like i don't remember what year again what it was when they announced this but it's like this movie is going to be like the origin of mm -hmm that wishing star and then yeah, i thought like maybe like you'd be like oh so this... and then it like it ping pongs off and i guess we can we'll kind of get into it. but there are like allusions to like some stuff in this to later on stuff and i don't know if this is like meant to be like oh this happened first and then and i get more... that was what i took was like this was walt disney's brain and everything F like that we've seen came from this because they had Peter Pan obviously in it. Oh yeah, Peter, like he was, and, and like yeah, even so. Then the I credits we'll, had all the other characters appearing. And... Yeah, we can you talk about like a few of those Easter eggs really quick? Because like especially spoiler like like when he's like popping some of the the wishes later on, and he and, yeah there you go, um, or he's like oh you you need a a great nanny for your your yeah. kids yeah. I'm popping this one and then or is and then there was like something like like something about flying so how about neverland right and then i think mm -hmm. i don't remember what the third one was but like no yeah remember, like there was like three of them like three three love, wasn't it like oh yeah so i mean that yeah. kind of could be like any but i i was like geez those are kind of like right like right there. I'm pretty sure one of the wishes he popped was Little Mermaid. Oh yeah, probably. But I recognize that. So yeah, I like my overall thoughts. More. Like, oops, yeah, sorry. I was just gonna say, like my overall thoughts were that I uh, like it's not it's not the best Disney animated movie ever made, but it's like far from Home on the Range. Um, <laughs> That's exactly the one I thought you were going to reference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Home in the Range, also in the credits. Uh, but Yeah, it made it to the end credits. Yeah. Yeah. Black Column did not. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the heck? No, Three Caballeros no, did not. Or the, the Rescuers. Yeah, yeah, I know. And Mitha Robinsons. Looking... I don't think Mitha Robinsons was in the end credits either. Yeah, I thought that was mm -hmm. like... Weird. Yeah. Very, very, very weird. Dinosaur made it though. That I'm glad dinosaur made it in there. <laughs> Isma right. made it in. Yeah. Uh, so uh, really quick, I'm just gonna read what the like the base synopsis of the film, is, and then we'll kind of get into like a more metered uh, discussion of it. So the premise of the movie is Asha is a sharp-witted idealist, uh, makes a wish so powerful that it is answered by a cosmic force. 
a little ball of boundless energy called Star. Together, Lumos. Yeah, Asha and Star <laughs> confront a most formidable foe, the ruler of Rosas, King Magnifico, uh, to save her community and prove that when the will of one courageous human connects with the magic of the stars, wondrous things can happen. So that is more or less the, the synopsis that is given for the, the film. Uh, and then in this movie, we got Ariana DeBose as Asha, Chris Pine as King Magnifico. That's got, who that was. I forgot to look in the credits, and I never looked it up after the fact. Alan Tudyk coming back yet again for Disney animation as Valentino. Uh, Angelique Cabral as Queen Amaya. I had Victor Garber as Sabino. Uh, Natasha Rothwell as Victor Sakina. Uh, and Peters, uh, Quicksilver, as Simon. Harvey Gideon as Gabo. Harvey Gideon, if people watch What We Do in the Shadows, uh, is Guillermo on that. He's also the voice of um, Gato in The Last... W that's, actually, that's funny. He was <laughs> in Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really good one. Which is terrific, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and yeah so I from there like the like the movie was has been kind of in production since i believe like the past three or four years or so and then like right now again i don't really take rotten tomatoes into any kind of contention but because it can be spammed very easily yeah so like right now the the critical score on rotten tomatoes for it i just want to make sure and cross check it is because I've seen one 49 score. was the last I saw. Hmm. Just check really quick for that. Wish is at 47. Uh, lower. No. Okay. Audience and score then, 82, critics 47. Oh, well, there you go. So, it's pretty, that's, yeah, really split. Yeah. So it's pretty typical, I feel, of Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Very rare. I wouldn't say rare, but it's majority of the time the audience is here, critics are here. That's true. Now, the the other thing I was thinking of, but but then I kind of dissuaded in my in my own head was that I was gonna be like maybe the characters they were showing in the credits were all the ones that had wished on a star, but I immediately debunked that <laughs> before. before yeah. I said, um, yeah, because I don't even think like Oliver. Or like anybody from Oliver and Company was in there. I thought oh, yeah. Oliver. I or, do think Oliver. Actually, yeah, was, never mind. Oliver was in there. I think Oliver was in there. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think so. But yeah. So really quick to to what Ted said earlier about Disney adult. Like when I went to go see it last night in preparation for this episode, it was me and like three or four other adults in there that I could tell were like Disney adults because like I was wearing this. And for people that are, are listening to the audio, I was wearing a Walt Disney Studios hoodie. <laughs> um, and then, like, the other Could have left like, it at this. Yeah. Put that was, ima imagination. Yeah. Imagination. Uh, I was wearing a full on Peter Pan costume. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, when we went and saw Lord of the Rings, remember when we sat there for 13 hours? Oh, yeah. People yeah. sat in full on movie replica costumes for 13 hours. Oh, wow. That's true. Although there there is a picture of me on the internet somewhere that exists of me as Peter Pan. When I was a, a young child, from a costume my mom made for me. Uh, nice. But yeah, it was like me and like three other like Disney adults, and they're watching it. And so I, I just thought that that was funny because you could tell, and that's kind of what I went for when I bought the ticket time because I was hoping it would be a late enough one where it wouldn't be full of mm -hmm. like little kids and stuff, so they could actually watch and pay attention to the movie. But now we've already given kind of like our initial thoughts on it as far as like asha in the, in the movie how how did you like her as a character overall in the movie and how do you think she kind of like stands up to like past uh disney uh, main characters whether they be male or female in the past we can kind of go backwards this time. So from Stanford, Ted, and then Mike, and then I'll go last again. I, th I thought Asha was beautifully designed. You know, I really liked her. I liked her character design. Uh, and I, you know, nothing but respect for our Ariana DeVos. I mean, she's, I thought she's, she's fantastic. Uh, even though I didn't like the songs, I just, you know, I loved <laughs> her voice and I thought she was fantastic. You know, she was great. Uh, Asha is a character. 
it was kind of weird because clearly she was brave. You know, I mean, she 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 was she was courageous, but I don't think she had really much of a character arc. You know, or there was a, not not a lot of in, you know. She was kind of like boring, yeah. but brave for to me. Yeah, uh, I, I I quite I don't mean to be too nitpicky or stupid, but it seemed weird to me that so the, in, near the beginning of the film and she's you know it's, it's her it's her grandfather's hundredth birthday. I mean, spoiler alert, right? We're 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 talking openly right about it's all in this the stuff. first scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's uh, the character arc is like that big. Yeah, yeah, it's just like nothing like that. But but she doesn't. She's off to have an interview with the king, you know, to be like the king's assistant. And she's like, oh, I can't stay to bake this cake. I've got to go visit my friend. And I'm like, why doesn't she tell him? Uh, I, that part was confusing to me because yeah. not that she's being deceitful. Maybe she's trying to surprise him or something. Like she's going to surprise him with, oh, I've got your wishes back or whatever. But um, I don't know. That that seemed weird to me. And then I just I just got it was just kind of a bore. I Anyway, but I really did like her. That whole um, this wish song. Not that I really liked the song, but that animation I thought was gorgeous. Um, you know, where she's sitting on the tree, where she would sit with her dad, and uh, you know, I just thought the animators did a wonderful job with that. Beautiful. So anyway, sorry, I, 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 I go on. <laughs> Boring but brave. How about you, Ted? Like I, that was my first thought as well. Was she didn't grow? She didn't have any. She didn't have an arc. She didn't. She's go she's anywhere. Fairy, she, she's a fairy godmother now. <laughs> it's true. And and, and then and she's she, she's going to become really old, and change races, and then yep. give Cinderella <laughs> and go to Cinderella's place. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's um, gibberish. Yeah, like all we'll lose those freckles. She. She didn't. She didn't grow. But like, I kept thinking, like, like Rapunzel, for example, she is completely torn between two decisions, mm -hmm. and it's what makes Rapunzel so relatable and so yeah. real of a character. <laughs> and and fight me on it, but Rapun uh, Tangled is better than both Frozen's. Like, it's more <laughs> engaging. I don't know. I like. I'll watch Tangle any day. Rewatch Tangle any day over Frozen. Love Tangle. Yeah. And and yeah, this this girl, you know, a lot of there's a lot of female strong female characters now that are just perfect from the beginning and it's the world that has a character arc learning that they are learning the world learns that the girl is perfect. And this she she made mistakes. She she did things that failed and everything. So I'm like, okay, She's not a Mary Sue like a lot of the others right right now, and so that that did help. But yeah, she didn't she didn't grow anywhere. She didn't. But I did like her design, especially like her hair is blowing in the wind, and I'm like yeah. the colors of the it's wind. Like all of Pocahontas, <laughs> like, yeah, Pocahontas braid. If, if he had braids, you know, I mean, it looked great. I thought it looked great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so have... yeah, oh. I didn't really think much of her. I guess. It was just, we were kind of like, like I said, her character arc was short. She had this desire to be the apprentice. The world was all rosy and perfect. And then in an instant, it gets taken away. And she's just, I got to get the wishes back. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to sway, sway from my decision. Like, I'm headstrong. I'm brave. I'm going to do it no matter what. And as Ted said, the world around her had to change. And she was just scapegoat catalyst if you will for that that's true so yeah and like so like one of the the things i noticed in this too is that like when she is at her her interview with with magnifico uh i found myself like kind of identifying with magnifico for a second there like she like with like in the interview like she was like already like asking for stuff. I was like, I feel like I can see like her point of view, like there, like where she cared, like obviously like cares for like her mom and her her grandfather, and she wants her grandfather to be able to like have that wish that he's like you know he's a hundred years old and so hasn't had it granted to him yet. But I, I also feel like there's a more possible 
tactful way for it to have gone like about like like possibly asking for that without like maybe like five minutes into <laughs> five ten minutes into her interview like be like so it's his birthday today uh can maybe you possibly maybe kind of i felt that was of, a decision made to just jump start and get going like that was the way they felt they could yeah. get to the point which because what's interesting too is it's like the mo movie's kind of also like a, a villain origin story too for magnifico almost more than like a hero origin story for, for well, he becomes Asha. the mirror mirror on the wall guy and that yeah well yeah because like be. like they show like all of like these good intentions for for him like like you know like they do the classic like book opening for how the movie opens and they give like his whole backstory like of how like he the reason he learned magic was basically he wanted to make sure that he could save people and and his whole thing was that like his like he has like this tapestry hanging up like in his office in there too and it's like he's basically doesn't want like greed or whatnot to basically take down like what all of like what he's built up with like learning this magic and trying to keep people safe um but he, like and then like because of the events of this this movie you can kind of see where like he's kind of teetering like to a point like where where like you know it becomes like almost like totalitarianism i just butchered saying that by the way uh but like where like like he's doing it like for like there, there's like good intentions behind it at a certain point but then you can Hubert see, wins. Like, Hubert. yeah, like you, you can see, like in laid with him that he's also like very beyond like the stuff that's very selfless of him. There's also this stuff that's very inner, like <laughs> selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, he's like, yeah, I, I, I'm good looking when he's just like talking to his wife and stuff, and like in the song to himself, mm -hmm. um, where he, this. Which that song would also be just like a good like parent song too. <laughs> There's like this is the thing. So yeah, it's yeah, this is an example. <laughs> like I, if you're already in charge, you rent. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like, like I I liked. I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Like as, a, I don't know if that would maybe could be like something. Maybe they do more of where it's, or this the story. Uh, like say maybe they do the next movie is like the story is not necessarily focused on a hero but like how this one was more of like an origin story for how he went from have, starting with good intentions and then you know you can see starting with good and then you know basically had had the dark hold and this for marvel fans and then gets you know seduced by that and then <laughs> you know bad bad crap ensues from that um but i i i thought that idea was very good i mean possibly maybe somewhat different execution for it also uh we keep making jokes about the center and i do is that uh our friend darren looks a lot like the character model for magnifico um nice if if magnif if Magnifico had glasses, he would straight up look like Darren. Who yeah, he looked like did, Darren. Did some well animated on on this film, and like one of the the scenes, I'll he, like the sh the shot that I'm using in our video. He I know he animated this shot specifically. Um, he didn't have a shot list yet that he could give me um, that we, that I would be able to like you know go off of what he had done in the film uh, i do know that he did animate one of the scenes with the, the eggs coming out of the <laughs> the chickens because he, he he posted like one of the squash squash and stretch scenes of like the egg coming out he's like when when you go to see you wish this this thanksgiving weekend <laughs> uh think of me when you see this egg coming out <laughs> these eggs things they don't teach in film school you're gonna yeah. be 
chicken lady. flying out of a chicken. Yeah. And the whole that see that whole segment reminded me of it probably was Drew right? as was, was like be our guest from Beauty and the Beast. But, oh uh, yeah. Just yeah, I chickens. I had heard or like seen from like like comments online from people that had saw like test screenings like that that used to be like a much longer song there. Uh, that didn't like in the movie it's like it's be all behind like a closed door like I, like yeah. happening behind like a scene. So I feel like I'm I'm glad that we possibly didn't get that <laughs> that full scene there. But like yeah when they do go into that scene it, it is very reminiscent of of like a BR guest kind of, yeah. you know, scene with I that. feel like they had this huge grand plan for this movie and they struggled to make it coherent. I mean, they're hundred years. That there's yeah, right. they, they, they had to... a heavy burden, you know. They had okay. the, the idea outweighed the execution. I almost think it would have been cool. Like, sorry, I just really quick before I forget, it, is I think it would have been cool. Uh, with Stanford was talking about the music, is that almost as like another like honoring like the past hundred years is this like maybe if they'd had like uh, like Richard Sherman work with Lynn manuel Miranda, work with uh, with the, the Lopez's. Basically, yeah, Lopez all, Alan all of... I, yeah, Alan Menken, like, all of the living kind of, like, music legends of, like, past Disney animated features to, like, maybe, like, have them all work, like, on... I mean, I don't know how that would have worked, but, I mean... Poorly. Because it's, like, you know, like, the celebration of 100 years, like if there was like a way to like a basically form like the disney music uh or song writer adventures yeah. essentially and each um, of them write a song or two or something you know i think that could have been cool i mean i i i enjoyed for the most part like i said there's there's songs that i like in other disney films more but i did like uh this wish a lot in the film and then and... uh the what, what i know like, what, yeah what I know now, I thought that what one I know was done. now, yeah. yeah, those are the two that those have are the in two that were I thought were overall pretty good. Yeah, and I interrupted you, Ted. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna point out that like so many films, like Brave. If you ever study what Brave was originally gonna be, way more interesting than what we got. Yeah, and it's sad they just ran out of time and money. To and they they ousted the director. They're like, sorry, you're taking too long, kind of thing, or and right. spending too much. They just cut it back. Yeah, it's sad. You're not feeding the machine. Now, it, I like I kind of give my thoughts on about like Magnifico. Like, what do you get? What did you guys think of Magnifico? To uh, go with Ted first this time, and then Mike Stanford, and then I already gave my thoughts on him. I do like. That they, like, we, we've gone so long with surprise Disney villains that it was nice that it was like, nope, he's going to be a villain from the beginning and everything. Uh, it, I was expecting it to be more refreshing than it was, but I, I, um, I had heard from a friend that it was a much <laughs> earlier in the movie change that he, he turned evil a lot earlier in the movie lot bigger signs and it was more gradual this time yeah um although they but, didn't hide it in the advertising at all either too which no that's always a bummer too like even like this is a an aside is that like with like the terminator genesis i think it was like they didn't hide at all spoiler people haven't seen that or seen the poster for that movie was that like <laughs> john connor is a terminator in that movie and like it's straight up like on the poster i was like that seems like something you want to hide for the movie <laughs> and then you just put it on the poster yeah <laughs> well, like but, when regal yeah. right before the movie uses clips from the movie oh, you're yeah. about to see Jeez. and just ruins a bunch of crap because they want to have popcorn that's happened when I've watched like CW shows on the CW app and I'm like behind and it's showing clips for like whatever the current episode is. I was like, oh, I guess that character oh. is dead in the next yeah. episode. <laughs> I thought Chris, I, go ahead. I sorry. thought Chris did a good job. Uh, which which Chris is he? Pine. <laughs> Just Pine. Captain Kirk. So we think. 
The, the one that's died in Wonder Woman twice. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, someone else can go now. It's funny you say which Chris is he because oh, what movie's coming out? In the hit? Oh, Garfield. Right, right before that started, the Garfield pr- trailer played. And I was like, oh, Chris Pratt in another voice. But yep. I didn't really think much of him as a villain. I thought he was kind of... It was interesting to see his turn, but it felt weak. Like he mm-hmm. was a weak villain. Like it was too obvious what was going to happen. It was just even the surprise twist where it's like he figured out their plan and was trying to stop, like wasn't where you thought he was. I was like, yep, yeah, makes sense. They went too formulaic, too, too easy. But it was nice to have a villain. So. How about you, Stanford? Yeah, I liked having an actual villain. You know, early on, you know, you just, you just learn early on that this is this is a bad dude, bad intentions. Uh, like Chris Pine, I thought, I thought he did fine. I mean, you know, and I thought he had incredible singing voice too. I was, saying, I was about to ask, did he actually sing? Yeah, yeah. he did. And I thought I this thought he, I thought he did get. fine. So yeah, I didn't know if that was him or one of like the like with the Lion King. He, when they had three. He, had the, he was in. The, he got the credit. You know, I know the yeah. state, you know, there's a lot of credits. And uh, and then he has that kind of duet thing going on with Ariana DeBose. Um, that, when they're that talking song, about the orbs. That song was weird. Yeah. I, I like fell, was falling asleep. I was like, <laughs> uh, that, that's, was, that's, that's was like too long. One of my own, only real criticisms of the movie was like, that song's really weird because they're, they're like singing to the, like, the, like, they had, like, that's like the first time they're meeting each other too. And mm-hmm. they're like, what a job had, interview. Yeah, like having like a duet as if they're like singing to the Better wishes, as it, like if the wishes are like their kids or like they're in love with the wishes. Like he was in love with the wishes. Yeah, but that's like a weird, it's, I don't know, it's got like this very weird tone to it. I don't it, like. It was his. And, and not, like, mu- not like musical tone, but like the implied tone of whatever it's. Like, it was uh, supposed to be. Can you feel the love tonight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was his moment. And at you least, know, but going. at least it took place during the day. It's like you know, <laughs> nice. He shouldn't. He shouldn't be dating a girl in high school, right? <laughs> like she's what, she's seventeen. Yeah. Um, so why why was he in love with the wishes? I thought it was because they gave him power, but it's not till well, yeah, later yeah, he that figure they, that out it, later. It gives him control. That's I a, think it was control. That's yeah, how control. I viewed it. Just I don't know if that's what the mm-hmm. filmmakers intended, but that's how I thought it was. It was a he was in love get... with being in control. Yeah, and then and then the he was loving good. more, having more power. I, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I thought that the third act, I, I quite liked the third act, and I thought I liked the scene where Magnifico. Where I mean, he, he's just totally unhinged. But oh, yeah. that's where he's channeling all the other Disney villains. You know, he's like the Wicked Queen from Snow White and Melissa and Ursula, this Ursula, this you know, the Sea Witch, and he's making all that potion and doing all that stuff. I, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty fun, and I like the big green, whatever you call it, you know. Oh yeah, like or his like representing his power or whatever. Yeah, uh, I felt like that was like very reminiscent of like the like the Briar kind of like. Uh, like thorny like patch from like, yeah. sleeping beauty from like beauty. around the kingdom there yeah especially because of the green and like with it holding all of them i thought you were gonna oh. say whatever splash mountain oh right. no and, and yeah <laughs> no. and for the villa just to go completely crazy like that I just thought that that was kind of a classic trope you know from from a lot of from a lot of disney movies and i, I was okay with it yeah uh now, like we've kind of talked about the music a little bit too. Was now with the 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 music, what were what were your what was your favorite song, I guess, or favorite songs within the the film? We'll go with Mike this time first. <laughs> then I, I don't know if I have a favorite me. one because they all like they weren't too different. They weren't different enough to stand out. Like, yeah, the, when they all start singing in the end to overcome them, the emotional impact of that got me, but it wasn't the song that got me. Like, there was nothing that really stood out to me as a favorite. Like, it was they too many different... I'm trying to think of the word. Just, they were trying to do too much. Trying to, like, hit notes from, okay, Encanto here, this here. Like, trying to pull those memories in 
to make it mean something for me. So the music was fine. It just wasn't it wasn't anything I can remember. Like you guys are mentioning all this stuff, and I'm like, wow, I really forgot all that, even though my daughter listens to it all the time. Maybe that's part of why I don't remember it, is because I have to tune it out day in and day out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I think like this wish is definitely like the I want song for this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and like the knowing what I know now is kind of like the, you know, like the crowd song that's like usually, you know, like, like a Beauty and the Beast. It's the, the mob song basically, but it's mm -hmm. in this, it's for good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I at least I think, good. Yeah. I think for me, at least the, the definitely like, I think we've all kind of, highlighted it too is like the three like kind of standout ones are the this wish this is Welcome the things i get and then knowing what i know now yeah and like and welcome to rose this is kind of like like you said like the intro kind of yeah it's, it's almost like an exposition song because it it gives you like well, yeah but like this is this is what happens <laughs> Uh, this is what there he goes does. The baker with his tray like yeah. always <laughs> yeah. it's like this is uh, just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean if this like being the beast like you yeah like you're saying being the beast a canto uh, this kind of you know introduction exposition so i'll be like here here are the some of the main characters of the movie here's the the setup of the stakes uh here's where the characters are right now here you go <laughs> but uh what T ted what was your your favorite or, song, i was gonna I say because I already talked about it, it was like Stanford could, Stanford could go next, but maybe I'll just because yeah, what I know now and this wish is probably the the top. I'm surprised none of us have said you're a star is their oh, favorite. No, that's our that's the worst one. I thought that yeah. was horrible. Kind of felt a little preachy. Well, and you know, I thought I've got to read the lyrics because I remember like maybe even during the second verse, something. Like, what are they saying? It's just like it just. <laughs> Like, it, it, it was, it was written by Carl Sagan. <laughs> We're made of star stuff. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was, I don't know. It didn't work for me. And I just thought, oh, this all seems, I mean, I did the thing. I thought the animated, I mean, the talking animals was fun and, you know, very oh, Disney, you know, but, uh, uh, I, oh, yeah. I and Bambi, Bambi showed up. Bambi. Yeah. And the, the, the bear's squirrel. Name the squirrel is the same design as Sword of the Stone squirrel. Sword of the Stone squirrel, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it would have been yeah. funny if the, the squirrel is called Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Wart. Or, yeah, or wart. Um, yeah, so, like, the, 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 the music in this movie was written by Julia Michaels, uh, who wrote... The Sorry, Julia. <laughs> for, the, for the movie. Um and then David Metzger is the composer who did like all the orchestral orchestral score uh, with Benjamin Rice uh, as well. And then it said Metzger previously worked on Disney's directed video animated films such as Tarzan 2, Brother Bear 2. Sorry. <laughs> uh, also, Sorry again. also worked on Tarzan, Bolt, Frozen, and Fro 2. Uh, so, Bolt. Yeah, so. Ugh. Hey. Shut your, your Miley mouth. Cyrus, John Travolta. I, Bolt is a good movie, and I'm still upset because they at one point teased that they were going to make the Bolt TV show <laughs> from Bolt as a Disney animated series, which they could still do that on Disney Plus. Because they that, I mean, they're doing the Tana show, they're doing Moana, they're doing Zootopia, <laughs> they're doing all those things. Make the actual bolt like the. No, they universe just paid the rock bolt. a bajillion dollars to do live action Moana. I mean, John Tra John Travolta is doing Capital One commercials dressed as Santa Claus. He can come <laughs> back and do the voice of Bolt. Yeah, that scarred me. That ad scarred me. Miley Cyrus has <laughs> aged out of playing the character, but they can get someone that sounds enough. They wouldn't go with her that. anyway. She's not. She doesn't have the Disney aura. Anyways, this is this can too much off topic but um <laughs> i'm good yeah at I, I generally like want to try to keep like s stuff positive or come at it from like a pot like yeah a ditto non negative angle but i like i do agree like on like 
the like the you're a star song is interesting in that like that one also like you said it uh ted you said it felt preachy i almost feel like and this isn't meant to be like demeaning of like anybody that is religious because i know some people on here are religious um but i'm saying that song almost sounded like it's like meant to be like almost has like an undertone of like re religion to it in, I was in a way anti-religion <laughs> hmm. i don't know i guess it could you go far That's enough around you go far enough around you become the other thing um <laughs> you live long enough to see yourself become the villain or yeah. die a hero or whatever that line is from batman or the, or the song is about the force it's the, everything's made of stars this is <laughs> this is this movie is actually the origin of the star wars this is set before that, that the movie. star wars <laughs> yeah this is in the galaxy before. far far away this is set before the movie it's set in the vast mer, mer what was it? Uh, mediterranean what? sea it's what's, so what's big <laughs> like what's his that, name? that got uh, me i was just like really mediterranean sea of all places yeah that's where all this stuff takes place frozen little mermaid i thought frozen took that's place where, in norway that's where corona is and yeah that's what the name of the island is entangled it's called corona they're they're in quarantine on an island called Corona. <laughs> uh, Simpsons wrote that one, right? Yeah, probably. I don't know, but yeah, I yeah, from like what I heard, I'm glad that they they cut the the chicken song out. <laughs> um, there Would kids the, have loved it though? Uh, That's the I question know. I had. It wasn't it wasn't let it go, uh, but. I know there there was, and I, it's probably just from where I'm at this year. But the, the the scene in this that like made me cry, it's like when she's she's having like when she's looking at her drawing in her book and she's like looking at the like the tree and like thinking about like her dad and that was like yeah. oh cool, 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 cool. <laughs> you're next talking scene, about next you were talking scene. about yeah you were talking about Cloudy <laughs> with a Chance of Meatballs earlier. It was like uh, Terry Crews's character is like. Get back in there, tear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I like with that chance part too. too. It's like, it's okay. You can come out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, I, I know there was some stuff that I wish that they uh, elaborated on more, like like that stuff with like, because it seemed like there was a lot of stuff that was cut out with like stuff with her dad, and like maybe there was like a past with yeah, like, her was... dad in magnifico possibly with the way that like he kind of talked like familiar like almost like a familiarity to it and that like the queen seemed like she knew her a bit like outside like like enough she was like i'm i'm rooting for you if, 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 like enough that it's not, not like the first time like they're meeting at that so i, don't know. I had well, one she was if coming up to give her a wish too on her 18th birthday so like I feel like they have a list of who's going to turn 18 and have to give their wishes to them. So that, that's the way I took it. That's why they knew her. Or you said, I'd wondered if they were going to reveal that Magnifico killed her dad because he yeah, was too much that. of a thinker or something like that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for that reveal, too. That would be interesting, yeah. I mean, with magic, he could make it look like natural causes. I mean, maybe, maybe he did. Maybe he did. He, was, he saw him sitting out on that tree, and he was like, "That's like a nefarious spot to sit. That's just kind of over That's a right. cliff. I don't know why you'd go and sit out on that branch on a tree like that." So, <laughs> so it won't make that be that hard to make it look like an accident. And yeah. <laughs> uh, he talked and, about how he talked. The dad talked about the stars a lot, and, yeah. and stuff like that. That was yeah. I that was something thought... I had heard was not in the uh, uh, earlier version. I almost thought that like it was going to be um, revealed that Star was, was it actually dead? like yeah it's like meant to be like I don't know, like some kind of I don't know like her dad some, 
yeah like her like with her dad and like you know like there's a song about like you're a star like and if, so it'd be like oh like people and then like during like that like that final scene like where you can sign to see like that like the light inside of everyone during that song too and like that it's revealed that everyone's a star like maybe it would have been revealed like at the end it's like oh when you die in this you like this <laughs> disney film everything the light universe yeah you you <laughs> yeah it's it. like the the great kings are up yeah. in the, oh i just thought it was big great balls of gas everything's gas so you everything is gas <laughs> and uh valentino did have like a a, a, a get like that same similar joke there too yeah and, and i'd say i liked alan tudyk again in this too this He's he's essentially Walt Disney Animation Studios John Ratz and you know, at this point. He's <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. Alan Tudyk is awesome. Like whether it's in a Disney movie Steve the or, Pirate. Yeah, or Steve the Pirate <laughs> or Resident Alien or or whoever he was in the Firefly movie or, series, whatever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's why uh oh Wash. Uh that's why I named my, my Nissan Leaf uh wash because because <laughs> it's a leaf on the wind uh or yeah or uh, the robot in i robot that was also alan tudyk i forgot about that movie the the one other th thing in this too is, i mean this can kind of like segue us into the easter eggs and kind of like our closing thoughts about it was um like the one other kind of thing that i think i would have cut out is like her huge group of friends that are obviously supposed to be like an allusion to like seven, seven, dwarfs. seven dwarfs seven dwarfs like yeah um like each of them is is one of like well this is you know, people wonder why i'm grumpy and i'm like oh <laughs> and sneezy and yeah sneezy sleepy. and bashful mm -hmm. and uh, obviously like her doc her yeah friend doc with because even has classes um yeah a dopey even they even did like the little like ear like yep. wiggle at one point too um and their names all started with the same consonant as uh oh yeah and like there's a it's a very quick dwarf. shot but you can see like all like these uh mugs like on yeah. a in the background on point and they all have you know like d g s on there um I must been sitting too close to the screen to catch that one. <laughs> that's right. Say, that's okay. what that's what my you didn't finger. see it in 3D too, did you? Because that would have really hit. Okay, that really been... access was not in 3D. Ugh. It was okay. just a regular uh, one. So I know I did see it in 3D last night when I saw it. And if you haven't seen it yet, I would highly recommend it to see it in 3D because of like how the the wish spheres in this float and like the stars always like. Oh yeah, I bet it looked great in 3D. Yeah. I, I like 3D movies and watching it, I was like, I regret not seeing it in 3D. But there, yeah. I, I saw yeah. it after work and then just get it in before this. The, the next 3D showing is 11 p.m. Yeah. at my local theater. It was that shown was... like three times in 3D. Yeah, same, same. Like really, really hard. That showing really definitely weird wouldn't hours. have had any kids in it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There and was, you don't there know was that. three of us in the whole theater. <laughs> Me, my friend, and some guy behind us. Like, and it was the largest theater that my local theater, my largest room, and mm. we there was only three of us in there. Four forty-five showing. Nope, it's, that's right before probably, dinner. You can't do it. I was gonna say it's maybe it's a bunch of people like last minute, like uh, preparing for American Thanksgiving tomorrow. So that's that's not what I can think of. Um, Matinees are where the kids come in, or the showing like around. If if they were to come in, it'd be like six at night. If. Yeah. And then you get those few straggling parents who show up at like eleven o'clock at night with their kid, and you're like, kids in bed. Yeah, <laughs> and then if yeah, if those kids are at that, then you know they're gonna be like all cranky and crap because they're at an eleven o'clock movie. And That's when at home we get the bed. complaints. There's a kid in there. What do you want me to do about it? It's like, <laughs> what are we? <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not their parent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't one that, that decided to bring them to an 11 o'clock I can't movie. not let them in. Right. I mean, you can. No, that's uh, discrimination. Uh, so like, you can like come in, but not your kid. <laughs> kid has to Uber home and go to bed. Your kid's got to go watch Thanksgiving <laughs> in the other theater. Yeah. Go watch some, let's watch a real family movie. Let's go to Thanksgiving. Yeah. 
That's that's your punishment for bringing your kid to an if they're old enough to see an eleven o'clock movie, they're old enough to go watch Thanksgiving by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> you never know; they might enjoy it. Oh, yeah. And then they become Magnifico when they grow up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, I mean, I think that would have that's like my primary thing is because like, if you cut a lot of them, like you could have kept like her her main friend or there that like is like essentially like the cook or whatever for the, the castle. Yeah. She just makes yeah. cookies. The, the really big maker. Maker. She just make, makes cookies. <laughs> that look like Magnifico. Uh and the like the friend I can't even remember what the character name is. Like well, the one that like like betrays them to uh, yeah. Simon. 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 Sleepy yeah. Simon. Yeah. His yeah. his role was I was so weird, I felt because I just felt like I was missing something the whole time. Well, I, th I think like the mechanics of it is like you know, like when your wish is taken, you forget what it is. Yeah, and then you but become this depressed blob that just goes yeah through life. Which I I liked that in it too, like with how it was explained. Because like if there is something that you're so passionate about and that you have a wish of something that like that you want to achieve, and that's almost like don't tell anyone, <laughs> <laughs> or that's almost like a lot of like what makes you you mm -hmm. if you if that's taken from you and you forget what that is what are you then at that point because <laughs> i feel like why would you give it away for hope that you'd have it come true <laughs> you, you didn't, yeah they're supposed to be granted <laughs> it's essentially like wish insurance you you get it just in case you might have to use it you know or get it yeah, it is such a strange concept. You come here, tell me your wish, and it might happen, but it won't. But statistically like, speaking, you have a very slim chance. Yeah, you have a totally <laughs> slim chance, but I will I will quote-unquote protect you, right? And you'll have a happy kind of... Yeah, you know, that's, you come here in this island. Non-existence. Yeah. Come see me once a month. Because <laughs> I was like, if, if I made my wish on there, like, you know, to like, I don't know, not even... To essentially just be able to do like the career that like that I wanted to. And th but like I gave that wish and then I didn't like like remember that anymore. I feel like that I feel like that would change like my entire personality because then I wouldn't like be doing certain things to pursue that like mm -hmm. thing anymore. I don't know. So I don't I mean all that, that feels more like a conceit or like a concept for like a much different kind of movie almost like to to like really delve into like that whole part of like giving the wish and then forgetting about it that feels like almost like a darren aronofsky <laughs> like promised wish two directed by darren aronofsky <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry brendan for you yeah or or like uh or wish two by terrence malick uh it's got it would have to be like a really like deep thoughty kind of to movie to like really delve into like the the psychological aspects of that um but yeah we we kind of talked a little bit about like the easter eggs was there like outside of the ones we already talked about was there any easter eggs that you noticed in the movie that kind of stood out to you because or that you particularly liked like the Anybody. the dress on the tree is the dress in Sleeping Beauty that the oh yeah make it blue uh, make it pink. three fairies make or no that's the cake. there or no that is the, the yeah there's a cake and a dress being made there's the evil poisoned apple was on Magnifico's desk um, but there is one that was so fast when. Uh, we've already said spoilers, but when, when the villain is finally defeated, um, that he he's getting sucked in, and there's a frame that I swear shows the mirror, the mask from Snow White, just a quick frame, and then go in, and I'm I'm like I don't have the ability to rewind or to prove it that it was there. <laughs> but you, you have to wait for the new Rockstar videos in a few months. Yeah, <laughs> surprised they're not already out. The oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say um, 
there was, I don't remember where it was, but it was like on a piece of paper in it. But it, it made me laugh to myself because it was like it was oh, starting was... to draw like the Mickey. Mickey yeah, the star did that. Or something. I was like, this is star and you're watching Disney Channel. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, remember, like, it like, kind of was number. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it was even like in the corner of the thing. But the, and then like the fireworks at the end are you know, like the Mickey. There's a Mickey and Star Wing. That's the least that's the least hidden Mickey of yeah. all hidden <laughs> Mickeys. Ever. I mean, the final scene was just oh, and then the yeah, and then, yeah, like the yeah, the castle with the like pixie dust going over it. There, yeah. Peter Peter Pan was if, clearly in there. Yeah, if they ever lose the copyright on Tinkerbell, the trademark on Tinker Tinkerbell, they could just switch to wit the star. the star going over. Yeah, the it's just it's yeah, star. star. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, I I think we said it off, Mike, but I was gonna say too, like the. The star design in this too, if anybody has seen the Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> it's the Luma. Is, yeah, like yeah, it reminded me so much of like that same character design in that. Um, me too. Mm -hmm. Wrong yeah. star. <laughs> uh, but now what were your opinions though? Because I I again going into it after the trailers, I just thought. I know I'm gonna be so annoyed with Star. Like Star is gonna be the character. <laughs> the but I actually thought Star was pretty cute. Uh, yeah. uh, what what were your what were your takes? I liked that it was silent and it was just a lot also yeah, I can a lot of just that. like silent film just, kind of like yeah, jokes with it because it didn't rely on dialogue because of that. Because they didn't back a hundred years ago. Yeah. Did your did your star doll come with a ball of yarn? Oh <laughs> dang it. No, that uh, Coach Beard's got that that, <laughs> that, that yeah. yarn. You mean Roy? Yeah, Roy was no. the one who did the no, the, yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, there's so many. I think, but the one that made me laugh the most was when he was trying to draw it in the book. That was my the Easter egg, the Mickey Mouse in the book. Oh, I, I think, yeah, that's that's the one I was thinking of with the, like, you're watching Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. But is, is there any any other Easter eggs that you guys noticed outside of those at all? There, I mean, there's probably can... other ones that we, we didn't notice. A quick that... Google search. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that someone's got a full list now. There, there's claims of anywhere between 10 and, like, over 100 Easter eggs. Oh, I'm sure yeah. there's a ton. Yeah. I saw a headline that was like, yeah, over 100 tributes to previous Disney movies. I didn't click on it because I wanted it to be surprising in the movie, but I was actually surprised that they weren't more obvious. There were yeah. some, like, some that were obvious, like, this is Peter, and he's going to make a flying machine. Yeah, that Peter right. man. But he's already, a, he's already a man. He's not He's not a boy. Oh, he was. he was... He wasn't a boy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's why it was going to be a machine. And that was the movie Hook. He was the man in Hook. There you go. Hook reference. Uh, Hook <laughs> in Cat and Peter Pan is actually an adult Peter Pan fighting his former youth. And it's a story about us fighting our youth and not wanting to grow up by fighting the adult version of ourselves. This is this is another Darren Aronofsky or Terrence Malick. <laughs> the point is, Hook is great. Yes, Hook, Hook the movie is also a great movie, starring Dustin Hoffman and Rob Williams, directed by Steven Spielberg. Julia Roberts is in it too. If you need yes. that. Glenn Close also in it. Cruella de Vil. <laughs> Rufio. Yes. Yeah. Rufio. Zuko. Rufio. Yeah. Who is who is a very very nice nice man. Yeah. But uh closing out, I want to end this on a positive note. What was your favorite thing <laughs> about the movie? I'll let Ted go last. Uh Mike first, then yeah. then Stanford, then Ted and then I'll or no, I'll go. I'll go, and then Ted can go the last. Favorite so go. thing about the movie that it 
I mean that my daughter enjoyed it. Like that was like made the made it worthwhile for me. Like, I was thinking we were gonna go spend all this money, go see it, and she'd be like, "That sucked." Kind of like when we watched Luca, she was like, "This movie was supposed to be good, Dad." Like, we were like, "Dang, you're cold." <laughs> I was expecting that reaction for this, and it didn't happen. She was enjoyed it, so I was like, "That made it worthwhile." Nice. She she just wanted some pasta while she was watching Luca, and she didn't get any. From. No, she. You gotta she have the full experience. Literally, you gotta, you gotta watch the movie Luca while eating. Yeah, pasta. this movie was supposed to be good. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. You're like, damn. <laughs> Jeez, that's. Let me watch it three more times. So. <laughs> She, she's know. gonna she's gonna be in the reboot of the 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 critic animated series. Maybe. She'll be at the beginning with like I thought it was supposed to be good. <laughs> Instead of it stinks, that's what that's what her tagline is. Uh, how about you, Stanford? So, as I previously mentioned, the animation I just thought was was great. But two other things, uh, I I liked how in the opening sequence uh, they used the same fonts as were used in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, which I thought was cool. And kind of, you know, that background that they were using that was kind of a different interpretation, but still, you know, uh, representative, I think, of that. And I thought, I I really liked the end credit. I mean, I liked that it was a storybook. You know, they had the storybook going on. And then I I thought the end credits were very clever, very pretty. Uh, You had Snow White font, and then uh, all the different animated films. the first one they made? Or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That first first feature length animated film from Disney. Crazy. So so long ago. Uh, Am I so, last or am I next? For me. <laughs> uh, I'll go. I'll go. I, I was waiting. I was waiting. I thought he was building anticipation. I, I found her friends' names. Oh, really too. It was, it was uh, Dahlia, Simon, Gabo, Safi, Hal. Zima and Dario. So, yeah. So, Dolly is Doc, Simon is Sleepy, Gabo is Grumpy, Safi is Sneezy, Hale is Happy, Bazima is Bashful, and Dario is Dopey. Uh, and then I did also like that the, the movie was dedicated to Bernie Mattinson, who recently passed away too, and it was also in the Once Upon a Studio short, at, which our buddy Darren's also in, in that same shot, but he's just like further in the in the background there, uh, <laughs> which I had originally thought that was supposed to play in front of this. It was. I was really a, surprised that it didn't. I'm. Did it play for mean, in front of it for anybody? Nope. No. I thought maybe it was just because I saw it in 3D, but I was like, oh, weird. I thought it was weird. I know that they you know, <clears throat> chose to put it on Disney Plus, but I thought they were they would do both, but yeah, but so, nope. It got pulled, which is a I thought a bummer because that I, I wanted to see that on the yeah, big I really wanted to see that. Like, after I, had, I was like, Oh, cool, I'm gonna get to see this on the big screen in front of Wish. Maybe but, they were like, Maybe little never kids mind. <laughs> didn't wouldn't want to sit through a, like a 15 minute short and then watch the movie after it. I don't know, well, they did that short. with Puss in Boots, similar to like, didn't they do like a little short film before that? Think they so. do shorts from from a lot of them, a lot of their films, you know. But yeah. Pixar does it anyway. Yeah, I used to. Carl's Carl's first date was in front of Elemental. Didn't see Elemental in theaters, so I don't know. That. Well, Carl's first date and Elemental are now both in Disney Plus for people that didn't see them, but both very good. And Once and, Upon a Studio, that's yeah. One Once Upon a Studio is also on Disney Plus too. Definitely, uh, yeah. Everybody should watch. Speaking of, like the what's, what's his name, the Splat or what from Strange World, he's Splat. They're in the the credits too. He's in the credits, yeah, at the very end. Um, but yeah, I think overall, like to kind of re- what Stanford said, like I really enjoyed the the animation. In this I liked that it kind of tried to diverge from you know just doing the straight up like standard like CG animation that people have kind of become almost like take for mm. granted now at this point. Um, and take a little bit more chances with like an artistic style for it. I know um, s- s- I heard like some criticism of it, like saying maybe it looks a little too muted or whatnot. But I I liked that they're like trying new things with it. Like we've seen DreamWorks do that with uh, with like like we said already about like Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, or like the bad guys like doing like different kind of stuff with their 
animation there, like, you know, you know, essentially the the Spider-Verse effect taking over, like, in an animation industry between, like, those films and, like, the newer Ninja Turtle, Mutant Mayhem film, kind of just, like, they're they're all CG animated, but they're, like, a mix of, like, CG and hand-drawn and whatnot. As long as it doesn't deter from the story, do it. Yeah, I, I like, yeah. Deter from the it, story, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, using it as tools and not a crutch. Uh, just like CG and live action movies, yeah. but uh, explosions aren't storytellers. Yeah, uh, and I I really liked Chris Pine in this. I really liked Aaron Debose. There's kind of like a a West Side Story feud going on at the box office right now between uh, this and the Hunger Games, uh, a ballad of uh, songbirds and snakes. Yeah, with Rachel got, Zegler. Yeah, you got Snow White, <laughs> Rachel Zegler, uh, in that right now, and then you got Ariana Debose in this too. Both of them sing in both movies too, so. You could do a triple feature of of the new Hunger Games prequel, this, and then West Side Story Watch after Spielberg's it. Spielberg's West Side Story, yeah. And, and there you go. Uh, but yeah, like overall, I, I enjoyed... Uh, I, I really enjoyed Magnifico in this. Uh, I enjoyed uh, Asha for the most part in there, too. And I, like the songs we already talked about, too, I, I enjoyed those a lot. And it's it's tough to make any any movie... Movies are hard to make. Boy, I appreciate all the hard work that goes into them, the, all the hours that animators have to work on this stuff. And I'm not, and I'm not Make saying that because we know it darn. Uh, but yeah, like, it's stuff's hard work. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, I, and it's got to suck when they do it and they think they're proud of it. And then some random guy comes in and watches, like, this sucks. Cut here, do that. We talked to these people, they hated this. Yeah. Change there, it. There was. That'll be final thing I say, and then I'll pass it off to that. It was that <laughs> there was a a good thing that um, Nia DaCosta said in a recent interview for the Marvels, where she talked about test screenings. Too was um, what kind of notes to take from those, and what notes to just kind of ignore. And if it's a note that helps the movie that she was wanting or they were wanting to make from the get go, then they'll listen to it and and take it to heart. If it's like just some random note that like has like no place in <laughs> the movie that they wanted to make, then it's just like no trash. Um, so I think that's interesting to know like what kind of notes they take away from like when they're mm -hmm. doing test screenings for whatever kind of film it may be. So overall, I I would recommend this movie to people to go check it out definitely if you can see it in 3d too in theaters uh, i'll always be a champion for like the, the movie <laughs> theater experience and if you don't want to be in a theater with kids although my, like mike said so maybe even if you go at 11 sometimes they might, they might be there too but if you can find like a random tuesday at nine at night you're probably gonna probably gonna be like your best bet for having a mostly <laughs> disney adult crowd to the theater that you're in. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Ted. Um, I do regret not seeing it in 3D. Like, Tangled kind of, they try to go for a flat look, and then the dollar theater, no longer a dollar anymore, but where they're like, we are ha we have 3D movies now. And so I was like, okay, let's go see Tangled in 3D. And watching it, I was like, I regret not seeing this in 3D earlier. Like, it just, it looked so cool with the, the style they were going for. And the instant depth of parallax and stuff. So I regret not seeing this in 3D. Um, I I think that the third act was the best thing for me. Like the last battle or whatever, you know, that no one really like fought, fought. But I don't know what else to call it. Yeah. When he's up on his tower and stuff. And visually it's beautiful. It was stunning. Um, the crowd work and everything like that. Like that was... That was probably the point of the movie that I was like, yes, yeah, we're finally we're 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 getting somewhere here. But to end, my favorite part was if I sell it, it's gonna ruin the joke, but there was the deer and oh, she's in yes. the cart <laughs> going towards him. Ooh, and the he's, light. <laughs> oh, they're so bright. And then then after they crash, and he goes, Oh dear, and runs away. <laughs> 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 I I laughed pretty loud in the theater uh, at that point. That <laughs> was, was good. That was good. Yeah, good call. 
All right, so that's going to do it for... Or Stanford, did you say? Or, okay, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> this is the, the second... It's late. For, <laughs> well, quite you. Uh, <laughs> peek beyond the curtain. This is the second episode of Stanford I recorded today. Uh, but So that's going to do it for this episode of Animation Fascination. Yeah, the yes. animation fascination. Uh, so, really quick, where can they find you online, Mike? Uh, Holdo Pod with Mark. Uh, Holdo Maneuver Podcast. There, I have a movie review channel that I have neglected this year for lack of time. Um, and otherwise, just search my name and look for the one who's not spouting racism. Always good. Uh, <laughs> And then how about you, Ted? Where can people find you online? Uh, YouTube is probably the best place at, at Ted Sowards, but I'm on the formerly known as Twitter as Ted here. Thanks. All right. And then Stanford, where can they find your other work online as well, too? So uh, I've got a movie podcast and website that's at moviespastandpresent.com, and I'm on Instagram at moviespap, as in past and present. And... Yes. Uh, and then you can find the Animation Fascination on Facebook and Instagram at Animation Fascination on Twitter and Blue Sky at Animated Podcast. Uh, and then you can check out our website at animationfascination.net. You can find links to our Patreon as well as to like well, shirts and other stuff there too. Um, and if you want to email us, it's, it's animationfascinationpodcast at gmail.com. Our friend Trent Vactor edits our episodes. Uh, so I'm Mark DeBert. So for myself, Sanford Clark, and our guest, Mike Soren, and Ted Sowards, thank you for listening, and make sure to tune in again next time. Bye, everybody. And when you wish upon a star. <laughs> when you wish upon a star.